This is our installation video for our PinSpot graphics. First I'm going to go over the components. First thing you're going to get is going to be a wire tap. This is a wire tap for a Stern Spike 2. You'll get the appropriate power tap for the game that you need, WPC, Data East, whatever it might be. This is the uh, power extension. This is 2.5 meters. This runs about 10 feet. So it doesn't matter where you're getting the power on your game, you're going to have a long enough distance to be able to put your spotlight wherever you want to. Uh, this is a couple of zip ties. These are Velcro to mount the spotlight and also to mount the wires. These are additional images that come with your kit. And we also will sell images for other games uh, for $10 on our website. So if you want to swap this out, you'll be able to do that to another game. Now let's, I'm going to talk a little bit about the, uh, this pin spot. This projector weighs roughly an ounce. So it's very, very light. And as you can see, it's very small. And it's going to mount easily wherever you want to put it. This can be mounted under your game to shoot down. It can be mounted on top of your game to, to do as a topper, or it can be mounted to shoot to the ceiling. Uh, from what we've done, we feel it looks the best on the ground. Then secondly, as a topper, when you go above your game, your game makes a lot of light and it all is being thrown up top. So if you put this mounted towards your ceiling, uh, it looks best towards the back for the shadow of the back box being able to, to stop it. Now this light produces roughly equivalent to a 60 watt incandescent. So this is a very, very powerful LED. It's a five lens design. So this is designed to focus at any length. So you can point it at any surface you want to and it'll focus. We recommend not focus or not pointing it more than about two feet because you start getting de degradation on the image. Now another catch about this product is this image, the, the, the kit that you get, your image is going to last roughly about a thousand hours. Now we give you extra images. The image that's in here is going to last roughly 250 to 300 hours. Because the light is so bright, it does fade the image. It only takes about five minutes to put a new image in there. The light itself is good for 50,000 hours. So on your initial purchase, you can expect to get about 1,000 hours of use. After that, you would need a new image. So we recommend this is for a home use only application. And we recommend it to be turned on and off as you would turn on your game on and off. If your game is on just an hour a day, you'll get about a year use out of this image and then replace the image later. So these are the components. Let's get to the installation. This is designed for uh, really a 270 degree swivel. We're going to be pointing this down. What you're going to want to do is use your screwdriver to tighten this up just so it's a little tight so it won't flop. Don't crank it all the way down or you'll damage the holder of the image. So if it's nice like this, that's, that's how we want it. Now we're going to get this ready for a under the game mount and it's very easy just take your velcro and uh, take the both the pieces off just mount this underneath there now before you mount this on your game you're going to want to take a cleanser to clean the bottom of the game but because this only weighs an ounce this velcro is going to be more than enough to hold it in place. Now this is going to dissipate some of the heat. So you're going to want to tighten up this line and the way we recommend you'll do this is just take this piece of velcro and fold it over right there. Don't put it on here. And so under the game, what we're going to do is we're just going to take off this back, mount that. We're going to take this Velcro 
and mount that and that's going to keep the the bow out of it and this area is going to get tightened up uh, at the other end near where your subwoofer is so let's go to the game and go to the next step okay for the installation video we're going to install this on a spike machine if you look further down in the video you will find a quick uh, versions of different games of where power taps would be and on our YouTube channel there's an in-depth description of how to install any of the power taps be it WPC, WPC95, Data East, whatever. Now on this one the Spike 2 this is gonna mount right there and then the next step is this is a 5.5 by 2.1 millimeter plug. This is a standard plug you find on many LED and 12 volt applications. You're going to connect your extension, undo it, and drop your extension down the back box, or down the game, because we're going to need to pull the wire through. So I'm going to do the fine tuning on that, and we'll be right back. Now on the bottom of your game, you're going to have a subwoofer, and it's going to be held in by four screws, or bolts, nuts. I've already taken them off and they'll just come off. You'll need a tool to do that. And I've already run the wire from the wire tap, power tap, to here. So you're just going to lift this up, lift up the grill, and then you're going to put the extension wire down out the bottom of your game. Now don't tighten this in yet because we want to get the pin spot in location so then we can kind of pull this tight so the wire doesn't hang down on the bottom. And once this is pulled tight, we'll, we'll tighten up all those nuts. Okay. This is the wire that you fed through the bottom of your subwoofer. This is the connection for the pin spot. That just plugs right in. Now, we already have the Velcro on here. Now, you should have the wire facing back and let me before I put that and this has got the sticky out and the sticky out so what we're going to do is we're going to put the pin spot in place first and then we're going to pull this tight back and then we're going to stick that up to the game so pin spot goes there and then the velcro goes there and we'll go to the next step now another handy hint is there's a cylinder in there that has the four lenses and if you don't have your image quite lined up the orientation that you want, you can use your finger and, and turn it or untie it from the back and turn it to fine tune, adjust it the way that you want. Now, before we button up everything, we're going to turn on the game and make sure we got all the wiring right. Okay, now there's your image. Now, because it's on a swivel, you can have this under the game, or you could pull it out a little bit for where you're standing. Now also, it is self, um, it is self focusing. So there I have it pulled down a little bit and you can see now I got the Velcro holding it up. But you see if I pull up, it does focus itself. So you don't have to worry about any different distances. Now this will work well in your average, average lit room. It's not going to work in the sunroom, and you don't have to have a super dark room. Some images do work better than the other. The undermount works really well because you have some natural shadowing from the game. As a topper works pretty well because any lights from the game are blocked by your back box. Again, the ceiling, you can't go directly above your game. There's too much upgoing light but you can go on the ceiling near your back box. So let's get everything buttoned up now that we know that that's working. And we have hundreds of images for different games. Now really the only thing left to finish this up is we're going to pull the excess wire until it's taut. And then we're going to take our nuts and tighten down the subwoofer. Now if you're going for a ceiling or a, a, a topper mount, uh, on the metal sterns there's a plug that you can pull out of the top that your 
wire can go through. If you're a WPC, uh, some of the other games, there's grills up there that you can take a grill off at the top of your back box and run the wire there. Now in the next few minutes, we're going to go over a couple of uh, different power taps. And also if you go to our YouTube channel, we have an in-depth description of all the different power taps for all the different games. But this is uh, pretty much the whole installation. It's a very easy installation for the PinSpot graphics. Thank you. The next two minutes we're going to quickly talk about different power taps for different games. So if you're familiar with the power tap on your game, you can just move forward on this video two minutes. And we have individual videos on each one of these power taps. Now, one of the main things I do want to talk about is that all our power taps are designed so you won't lose your plug on your game and that's done by the Z-Connect. If you don't need the Z-Connect to save a port, don't use a Z-Connect because it'll leave exposed wires out. So uh, enjoy the video. Spike 2 system, the wire tap is going to look like this. A Spike 2 system is easy to spot because it's a stern liquid crystal display or it's Ghostbusters or Game of Thrones. The location of where the Spike 2 power tap is going to go is it's going to plug in right here, and here's one that's already connected. Your Stern is not a Spike 2 or a WrestleMania or a Kiss, then it's going to be either a White Star or a Sam that uses a Molex plug. And a Molex wire tap is very simple. If you open up your coin door and you look right there, there's the wire tap. This is the wire tap and it's already installed. Now if you've never had a mod in your game before, you might have to reach up and find the wiring harness and bring it down. But it's going to be right inside your coin door. This is going to be a WPC wire tap. A WPC is a Bally Williams game that's easy to identify because you have to pull the wood panel up. The wire tap is going to plug into one of these plugs and those are going to plug into the wire tap. This is a WPC95 game, and they're easy to spot because it has a plastic speaker holder for the DMD. On this wire tap, it's going to plug into one of these four. For a Data East or a Sega, it's a large 15-pin connector for your tap, and this is going to plug in right up here. A video on our photo sensor relay. And what this is, is this is a relay that will turn on and off light as light is brought on and off to the photo sensor. Now here we're using it to control one of our magnetic hinge covers, but it can be used in a lot of different applications.